It is no mere coincidence or luck of the schedule that I am preaching on Christ the King Sunday. Today's gospel is tough, and even the name Christ the King is tricky. My supervisors were only too happy to let me take the reins today. (laughs) This morning, we are celebrating our liturgical New Year's Eve, so to speak. In the last year, we have prepared for the birth of Jesus in Advent. We have celebrated that birth during Christmas. We celebrated the revelation of Jesus to the world during Epiphany. We spent a season of contemplation and penitence in Lent. We rejoiced in the resurrection at Easter. We celebrated the church at Pentecost. And then we spent a long summer and fall trudging through the nitty-gritty details of the Gospels during ordinary time. And so we come to today, the very last Sunday of our liturgical year. Next Sunday, we start again with Advent. I think that endings are very important. None of us generally prefer to leave tasks unfinished, questions unanswered, visits without proper goodbyes. We like closure. In some ways, today's gospel reading gives us closure. It is a vision of the very end of time itself, and it gives us a clue as to what this whole liturgical year, our whole history of being God's people, is leading up to. On the other hand, today's gospel leaves us hanging a bit. We have no idea when Jesus will return, when we will be judged, when the kingdom of God will reign supreme. For a year, we have read and meditated on scripture. We have tried to live into God's grace and blessings in our lives, only to be told on the last day of our liturgical year, now sit tight and wait. It feels like the last page has been torn from a good book. It feels like my favorite TV show ended the season with to be continued. It feels like there must be more. But I should be careful what I wish for. There's always more. Today's gospel does not just reveal the end times. It gives us all the gory details. Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, putting the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. The sheep are the righteous who are rewarded with the kingdom of heaven, and the goats are the unrighteous who will spend eternity in fiery destruction. If you are anything like me, talking about the end of time makes you very nervous. I have always struggled with images of the great judgment in the New Testament. They leave me feeling very vulnerable. But I must say, I find it ironic that we don't like this particular passage because we absolutely love separating the sheep from the goats. We do it in our political system. My party is the sheep, the opposing party are clearly the goats. We do it in our social system. I have a steady job and a spotless criminal record, so I am a sheep. Other people who are unemployed, hungry, and have spent time in prison must be the goats. We do it in our religious system. We have the right idea about how to be Christian. We do the right liturgy and the right outreach. Those non-Episcopalians over there are definitely the goats. Now, I don't think that we do this because we're hateful or malicious. I think that we do it because we're scared of the end of time. We're scared of judgment. We're scared of being sorted in with the goats. This anxiety causes us to expend so much energy convincing ourselves and others that we are destined for sheephood. But I discovered something important when I reread this passage in preparation for today's sermon. As it turns out, the separating is not our job. We don't get to decide who is a sheep and who is a goat. Christ is the only judge. And not only that, but the righteous and the unrighteous seem genuinely surprised by which camp they end up in. When did I see you hungry and give you food, Jesus? When were you in prison and and I didn't visit you? I can't help but ask myself, am I going to be surprised too? 
If I can't decide for myself, or even just have some assurance that I'm a sheep, what do I do about the end of time? How can I handle this anxiety? How do I know if I'm on the right track? The answer is clear in today's gospel. If I spend more time feeding, clothing, visiting, and comforting, and less time shopping, streaming, rushing, judging, my anxiety about the end of time will inevitably dissipate because I will be serving Christ. This is how the sheep are surprised in the end. They have not been worried about their status. They have been busy being servants, and to their great surprise, they are suddenly rewarded. It's the same for us. It's easy for me to announce to you right now how we ought to act in the world, but it is much harder for us to remember in our day-to-day -day lives. In fact, when we do stumble upon Christ in the face of the least of these, we're always surprised. These instructions for how to live are good news for us here on earth. And I fear that many preachers and readers might stop there. But I don't want to belittle or make light of the end of the world. It's a big deal and quite frankly, terrifying. I believe that it is healthy and important sometimes to just sit in that fear and confusion. It's part of being human. On the other hand, I would like to share something radical that a wise fellow seminarian shared with me and which might well be the biggest surprise I've ever experienced. The end of the world is the best news because it means Christ is coming back. I also think it means that there is a sense of urgency to our task. Not only is Jesus our savior and redeemer, he is the sign that there is an intended conclusion to our history. We don't have forever to feed the hungry clothe the poor, comfort and visit the sick and imprisoned. There's one more surprise in store on Christ the King Sunday. When we look back over the history of God's people from the time they were in captivity in Egypt, they sought leadership. God gave them Moses and then Joshua and then a series of judges, prophets, then King Saul, Finally, David and his line. Israel has been longing for a king to rule her from the beginning. Still today, we know we need guidance and God's grace. Believing in God and having good intentions isn't enough. But it still feels strange to call Jesus our king. In the past few weeks, we have heard several gospel passages that challenge the established leadership. Jesus asked the Pharisees whose image was on the coin, and they answered, Caesar's. Our ears are tuned to hear signs of warning against earthly empire. So why is it so important for Matthew to call Jesus our king instead of just our Messiah or our Savior? Because it is Jesus we are talking about, we can be sure that the status quo, the norm, the standard, the way we expect the world to work is going to be overturned. As it turns out, part of Jesus' life and message is that a king is less like a powerful, manipulative, authoritative figure and much more like a shepherd a shepherd who would leave 99 sheep to find the one that is lost. God does not leave us to serve the least of these in our communities on our own. He has sent his son to be our redeemer and our shepherd king, to guide us through the ups and downs of life as a servant of God. The closure we find on the last day of our liturgical year is assurance that our task is clear, that we are not alone, that we have a king to lead us, and that there is a purpose, a goal, a conclusion, 
a writing of the world in our future that we are all working towards by serving God in Christ. Amen.